In this video, we'll be going over the brief history of all of the Warlock Demons. During Vanilla, Warlocks had four default demons, two special summon demons, and two demonic mounts. The first demon you would get was the Imp, the only pet demon to not require a soul shard, and also being the default damage demon. The Imp just sat at range and flinging fireballs, buffing allies with stamina, and had a fire thorns effect. The second was the Void Walker, earned at level 10, and the first to have a real quest chain to obtain it, sending you across the starting zone and then back to the city in order to learn how to summon it. It was also the first to cost a soul shard to summon. The demon was usually just used as a tank for the warlock, and had the special abilities of an out of combat self heal, a single target taunt, an AoE taunt, and a sacrifice that would allow it to give the warlock a shield. The third was the succubus. This demon's unlock required a long distance cross continental journey to acquire. The demon's special abilities included invisibility, a single target damaging spell, a soothing kiss which reduced the aggro it had with the enemy, and lastly its seduction ability, a humanoid only CC channel ability. The succubus was used mostly for PvP or sacrifice for the buff it gave, if you took the demonic sacrifice talent as the buff from the succubus was just straight up a shadow damage increase and contributed to some of the highest DPS gains of a warlock at the time. The last of the normal pet-like demons is the Fell Hunter, learned at level 32, sending players on another cross-continental journey to acquire. Its special abilities were very much spellcaster counter to line, as it was able to remove magical debuffs from allies, magical buffs from enemies, healing the demon, a silence that also interrupted, and a buff that gave nearby party members increased stealth detection. And lastly, a stacking melee attack power debuff to anyone who tried hitting the demon. The first greater demon summoned was the Infernal. This demon was obtained at level 50 through another cross-continental quest, or from a rare book drop, if you didn't want to have to do the quest, as it was also the only way to get the demon before the quest was added to the game. To summon the Infernal, you needed a specific reagent called the Infernal Stone, bought from a vendor and consumed per use of the hour-long cooldown. The Infernal was summoned and would then crash into the ground as a meteor, doing constant AoE damage and then just attacking stuff. The second greater demon is the Doom Guard, earned through another questline, or simply grinding for a special book. The demon was summoned through a special ritual that required the Warlock and four other players. Then, after a few moments, the spell would complete, killing one of the players and summoning the Doom Guard, which would then need to be enslaved by the Warlock with their enslaved demon spell, if they were still alive. The Doomguard had the special ability of a Dispel, a Stomp, a Reign of Fire, and a Movement Speed debuff on a channeled spell. It also had a chance to be summoned when the Curse of Doom dealt the killing blow on a target. There was also two very special demons in Vanilla WoW, the Steeds. The first one being the Fell Steed, obtained at level 40 for Warlocks. It was unique in the sense that it was free, compared to all other classes who had to pay for their mounts at that level, and quite a lot too except for the Alliance-only Paladin, they also got a free mount. This mount was also a spell, not an item, so it didn't take up a backspace. Another benefit over other classes. It was as simple as traveling to the Barrens, get your quest, and you're done, and you have your horse. The other steed being the Dread Steed. At level 60, this demonic steed was not free and cost gold, but really nowhere near as much as the epic mount for all the other classes. Some crafted materials, a few hundred gold, some of the items bought with gold even reusable for other warlocks, meaning a large group of warlocks all working together to get the mount would pay way less than a person just buying their epic mount. Going to a few locations around the globe, ending with the enslavement of the dread state at Dire Maul. The free level 40 mount and the much cheaper level 60 mount made warlocks a great class for saving up initial gold with. Then in the Burning Crusade, warlocks got their next main demon, the Felguard. This demon was the final talent in the demonology tree, so it was specific to one spec of warlocks. The Felguard acted as a tank and DPS pet, making it quite worth its final talent spot. When this demon was available in the pre-patch to TBC, and paired with the Black Book Trinket from Blackwing Lair, it was as powerful as semi-geared warriors. But this only lasted for a month though. The Felguard's main abilities were a charge that stunned, cleave, an attack speed buff, a threat generator, and a passive reduction of AoE damage taken. In Wrath of the Lich King, we had the introduction of glyphs and talent changes, and through those, the demons started to have their spec-based niches. Fell Hunter was becoming the main pet for Affliction, the Imp for Destro, the Felguard for Demonology, the Voidwalker for general tanking stuff, 
and the succubus for PvP. This only increased by the glyphs added for all the individual demons. We also had the paranoia feature of the Fell Hunter moved over to the Voidwalker when it cast its out of combat self heal. The Hound also lost its Tainted Blood ability in exchange for a raid wide mana buff and a damage dealing ability. Lastly, the Demonic Sacrifice Hound was removed from the class, as demons were a big part of the Warlock class fantasy at this point, so they didn't want them sacrificing them for buffs. Cataclysm is when demons began to see some shine. First, we had reworks of all spells for every single demon, although each stayed in its same niche. They saw class quests remove, meaning all the demons that once required class quests no longer did, and could now just be learned while leveling. And these talent changes only more pushing the X demon is for Y spec. Demonology was becoming a spec based around its demons, and a Gul'dan, a new spell in the tree that gave all warlock demons, not just your own, any warlock demons extra crit chance to the target and enemies around it. We also saw the introduction of the mastery system, a new stat that gave different effects based on the spec, and demonology is being a buff to their demons. Cataclysm also saw a change to doom, now having a chance to summon an Ebon Imp on each tick instead of a Doom Guard. In Mists of Pandaria, the talent tree saw an overhaul as well as somewhat with the demons. All demons now used energy instead of mana, fixing many problems with them running out of mana in combat in order to do stuff. The Metamorphosis ability was made baseline for Demonology Warlocks and became a major part of the spec, where you became a demon yourself. Wild Imps were added to Demonology Warlocks, the start of a theme that would follow the spec to the modern day, where you summon imps throughout combat that would attack the Warlock's target, as well as Doom, the upgraded version of Corruption, granted while in Metamorphosis, summoning an imp on crit, a quite famous use of this being with the trinket off of Thunder King, allowing for Demonology Warlocks to summon an insane amount of imps with it. The new talents also gave Warlocks three Grimoires, which affected demons directly. These three talents were Supremacy, making all of your demons stronger, as well as changing their forms. Imp to Fell Imp, Infernal to Abyssal, etc, etc. Servitude, allowing you to summon a second demon for a short time of your choice. And Sacrifice, returning the Sacrifice spell to the class, granting the same buff no matter which demon you summoned, but now granting you one of the demon's key abilities for you to use. The glyphs for each of the demons also just got combined into one and they were even given a new one that granted your demonic steed, Water Walking, and one that made your Metamorphosis a permanent tanking spell, allowing Warlocks to become a Demon Hunter off-tank type thing with wings, horns, and all. In an interview with the Warlock class designer from Mop, they stated that they wanted Warlocks to be legit tanks, but couldn't figure out how to not make them better than actual tanks. So they canceled the plan and gave them the Glyph, which was a nerfed version of the idea they had, meaning it was rarely used. On fights like Dark Shamans, where one of the bosses did little tank damage, and the fight was easier with three tanks. There was also a glyph that turned the passive imp summoning into an active spell to summon a little pack of imps. Lastly, there's a thing called the Green Fire Quest Chain, which ended in the ultimate fight against a big, powerful demon named Kanrathod, and becoming a legend of Falfire. This quest turned many of your spells fell green your Infernal and Abyssal turning a dark green, as well as changing the colors of your Fell Steed and Dread Steed into flaming green demon horses. The Warlock's Metamorphosis also becoming a Fell Green. You could even enslave a Pit Lord during the quest, who are normally very powerful demons that cannot be enslaved. With Warlords of Draenor, we started seeing the Demonology Warlock become a Demon General, with some specific items in the expansion. The new role the Talons introduced for Demonology, like the Talent Demonic Servitude, that allowed a demonologist to summon the Infernal or Doomguard as a permanent pet. The Infernal being an AoE DPS and tank, the Doomguard being a good single target DPS and utility demon, and both of these demons were much better than the standard default demons. So on to Legion, the demonologist became a spec based around summoning armies of demons to fight for it. Hand of Gul'dan was now a spell that could be used as many times as you wanted, no longer having charges as it now cost soul shards, which were obtained one soul shard per shadow bolt. Hand of Gul'dan summoned one imp per soul shard spent, and with a few combinations of items and stuff, you could get it to summon an army of imps. First, you would cast Shadow Bolt to gain a soul shard, and then cast a single shard Hand of Gul'dan, which would summon one imp, and have a 50% chance to also summon three more imps. Then you would empower them with haste through your demonic empowerment so they would attack faster. 
Then, with the Death Rattle set's new effect of your imps attacking, have an 8% chance to summon even more demons to attack the enemy, it allowed you to summon armies of imps that would then summon armies of other demons to fight for you. With this set, item, and play style, they called this a meme build that could do massive damage in single target turrets, allowing demo locks to pull insane numbers and swarm with the demons. All while mostly just pressing three buttons in the exact same order. Legion had the new playstyle of demonology, being summoning and empowering your demons, so of course we saw a lot of new demons. First, there's the Dreadstalker. Much like the Fell Hunter, this demonic hound has no eyes, leathery, scaly red skin, and a white beak like Maw. However, no mana stealing tendrils and is much more slim. The Warlock could, with a cooldown, summon two of these to attack the enemy. And with a talent, these Dreadstalkers could even have imps riding their backs. We also saw Hand of Gold down now directly summoning imps, costing one to four soul shards, and summoning one imp per soul shard. And with these summons, paired with the spell Demonic Empowerment, it made the Demonologists a swarm of powerful demons. The Dark Lair was a new talent for demonology, a large oracle that would fire chain lightning like shadow beams at enemies affected by the Warlock's dots. There was also the new PvP talent system, and two of the talents were summonable demons. The Fell Lord, a massive Felgar that would stand in one spot and damage and stun defend its area, and the Observer, which would shoot enemies when they cast spell within its range. The Infernal and Doomguard were now default DPS cooldowns for all three Warlock specs that shared a cooldown, Infernal being for AoE and Doomguard for single target, still having their talent Demonic Servitude to become permanent pets. However, the talent was renamed and was now called the Grimoire of Supremacy replacing the old one, meaning the empowered default demons were all gone, replaced by the glyph versions, making the empowered version of the pets, purely cosmetic now, the Wrath Guard not being added until patch 7.2. Legion also saw artifacts, really not affecting demons too much, other than Destro having buffs for imps, and being able to summon four infernals at once. There was also the Legendaries, the Wilfred Sigil of Superior, summoning reduce the cooldown of your Infernal slash Doom Guard by 2 seconds for each Wild Imp, or Dreadsocker you summoned, allowing you to summon your cooldown demons much more often as you summoned your armies. Another being Sindor Ice Spite, giving you almost half a minute damage buff after summoning your Infernal slash Doom Guard. Sadly, because of a hidden internal 3 minute cooldown, these two legendaries did not work well together. Lastly for Legion, we have 3 new demonic steeds for the Warlock. The quest line being a quite fun one that you unlock after completing your class campaign, in that it required you to collect Albi's blood, some crafting mats, potions, and going to the planet of Zorethian, even speaking with Mazrul Bloodbringer, a great callback to the original quest line for Warlocks to get their Dreadsteed. The Felt version of the Wrath Steed being the one you get from the quest, the Fire being from Max Not Your Artifact, and the Shadow one dropping from Lord Hell Nuthrath, a rare mob on the Broken Shore. Again, a callback to the original questline, as it's the same demon you killed in Dire Maul to get your original Dreadsteed. Then with BFA, Warlock saw another overhaul for demonology. Losing demonic empowerment and changing up how it worked, it got a load of new demons. First, the Doomguard was removed, sadly no longer a normal summoning demon. The Infernal became a Destro-only demon that worked amazingly with Chaos Bolt and Shard Generation, and with the Grimoire of Supremacy gone, the permanent Infernal was no longer available. Affliction got the Dark Glare, which extended dots, while Demonology got the Demonic Tyrant, focusing around extending the duration of your current demons, and increasing their damage, able to even consume the Warlock summoned imps to massively empower itself. Talent-wise, Demonology got a lot. Bile Scourge Bombers allowed the Warlock to summon swarms of demonic bats to crash into the target's location for AoE, Summon Vile Fiend allowed the Warlock to summon a demonic beast of acid to lash out at the chosen target, for heavy burst damage, inner demons gave the warlock so much demonic might that the imps would constantly spawn from their bodies and even have a chance at summoning random other demons like Eyes of Gul'dan, Void Hounds, Satyrs, and even Maul Hazar. And lastly, the Nether Portal. The warlock would open a portal and then for every soul shard they spent while it was open, a demon would come from the portal and attack the enemy, allowing the warlock to quickly swarm enemies with clusters of demons. And really, that is the end of it for this video. This covers pretty much the history of every single summonable demon the Warlock contained, and some spells that massively affected those. Now, we didn't want to go too in-depth with every single one, or too much into numbers or specific changes, as this video would be an hour long. 
since I already have made specific videos on all of the main Warlock Demons. If you wish to learn even more, I'll have all those videos linked in a playlist at the end of this video. Also, thanks to the editor Felplague for putting this video together. If you want to bug him about what the next history of video will be about, I'll have his Twitter and stuff linked in the video description if you want to check him out.